The shadow is a moral problem that challenges a whole ego personality, for no one can become conscious of the shadow without considerable moral effort. To become conscious of it involves recognizing the dark aspects of the personality as present and real. This act is the essential condition for any kind of self-knowledge. Carl Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist, theoretician, and writer who dedicated his life to the exploration of the human psyche. Jung was one of the few that have attempted to bridge the notions of psychology and spirituality in an effort to discover ways to transcend the human condition. He is well known for formulating the concept of the shadow. Well, what is the shadow? In 1945, Jung gave a most direct and clear-cut definition of the personal shadow. The thing a person has no wish to be. The shadow is the unconscious aspects of an individual's psyche. The shadow lies in opposition to the ego and is often referred to as the dark side of the personality. It is a personification of everything about ourselves which we have rejected, despised, denied, or simply never even knew was there, and it does not correspond with the ideal version of what we're aiming for. As Jung states, everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. How does the shadow form? The formation of the personal shadow begins early in childhood, as we learn to navigate the complex social and cultural norms of our environment, as we are taught what is right and wrong, good and bad, acceptable and unacceptable, we develop a sense of self that is defined by these external forces. For instance, a child who is constantly told by their parents that they are too sensitive or too emotional may learn to repress their feelings and emotions in order to avoid criticism or rejection. This child may then grow up to struggle with expressing their emotions and may feel disconnected from their own emotional experiences. Over time, we learn to suppress these unacceptable aspects of ourselves in order to fit in with the expectations of others. We push them into the shadow, where they remain hidden from our conscious awareness. However, the shadow does not disappear simply because we repress it. It continues to exist in our unconscious mind, influencing our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And whatever qualities we deny in ourselves, we see in others. This is what Jung referred to as shadow projection. Projection is one of the commonest psychic phenomena. Everything that is unconscious in ourselves, we discover in our neighbor, and we treat him accordingly. Projection occurs when we project these repressed or denied aspects of ourselves onto other people, objects or situations in the external world. This means that we see these aspects in others, rather than acknowledging them as part of ourselves. Projection can take many forms, such as projecting our own fears onto others and seeing them as threatening, or projecting our own desires onto others and seeing them as attractive or desirable. The relationship between the personal shadow and projection is that projection is a defense mechanism that arises when we cannot acknowledge or integrate our shadow aspects. By projecting these aspects onto others, we can avoid confronting them within ourselves and maintain a sense of control or superiority over our own psyche. When we project our own negative aspects onto others, we may judge, criticize, or even attack them, rather than acknowledge and work on our own issues. For example, a person who struggles with jealousy may project their own jealousy onto their partner, accusing them of infidelity or flirting with others. This projection allows them to avoid acknowledging their own feelings of insecurity and fear of losing their partner. Or, a person who is deeply insecure about their appearance may project their own insecurities onto others, criticizing and judging their physical appearance. This projection allows them to avoid confronting their own self-esteem issues and maintain a sense of control over their own body image. These psychological projections distort reality, creating a thick boundary between how we view ourselves and how we behave in reality. As Hermann Hesse once said, if you hate a person, you hate something in him that is part of yourself. What isn't part of ourselves 
doesn't disturb us. The shadow may also manifest in dreams. Where the shadow may appear as a threatening figure, like a monster or a villain, or it may take the form of a taboo or forbidden act. You see, the shadow is not inherently negative or destructive, however, it becomes problematic when it is not acknowledged and integrated into the conscious self. By ignoring or denying these aspects of ourselves, we become disconnected from our true selves, leading to a vast array of potential issues such as depression, anxiety and other mental health problems, self-loathing, self-sabotage, addiction, hypocrisy, obsessive behavior, emotional instability, and more. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you will call it fate. Jung often spoke about the individuation process, which represents a journey a mind must undergo to achieve wholeness. One of the most important steps is assimilating the shadow. So, how do we do that? According to Jung, there is no single effective technique to integrate the shadow. To assimilate the shadow, we must first acknowledge and take seriously its existence. This can often be the hardest step, as it requires us to confront the darker aspects of ourselves, including our fears, insecurities, and impulses. However, once we can accept these parts of ourselves, we can begin to understand how they influence our behavior and perception of the world. Secondly, we must become aware of its qualities and intentions through conscientious attention to our moods, fantasies, and impulses. By becoming consciously aware of our emotional triggers, defensive mechanisms, and the specific traits in others that we dislike, it will provide us with valuable information about the nature of the shadow. These patterns in our behavior can help us understand the unconscious beliefs and behaviors that shape our lives. This requires self-reflection, which can be achieved through practices like meditation, journaling, and dream analysis, allowing us to gradually learn about the nature of our shadow. The final stage of integrating the shadow involves a lengthy process of negotiation, in which we must determine which aspects of our shadow are useful and which are not. This process involves accepting and rejecting different parts of the shadow while exposing it to the world to gauge its constructive or destructive impact. This can be a challenging process, as it requires us to confront the ways in which our shadow may be holding us back or causing us harm. However, by engaging in this process, we can gradually transform our shadow from a source of pain and confusion into a source of strength and creativity. You see, the shadow isn't a flaw or a mistake. Instead, it's a natural part of who we are. Working with your unconscious mind to uncover the parts of yourself that you repress and hide from yourself can be quite a confronting experience. However, it's the only true path to enlightenment. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. For there is no light without shadow, just as there is no happiness without pain. The more we can integrate our shadow and realize the profound power it has over our lives, the faster we can begin to heal ourselves and, as a result, the world. The shadow, when it is realized, is the source of renewal. The new and productive impulse cannot come from established values of the ego. When there is an impasse and sterile time in our lives, despite an adequate ego development, we must look to the dark, hitherto unacceptable side, which has been at our conscious disposal. This brings us to the fundamental fact that the shadow is the door to our individuality. In so far as the shadow renders us our first view of the unconscious part of our personality, it represents the first stage toward meeting the self. There is, in fact, no access to the unconscious and to our own reality, but through the shadow. Only when we realize that part of ourselves which we have not hitherto seen or preferred not to see can we proceed to question and find the sources from which it feeds and the basis on which it rests. Hence, no progress or growth is possible until the shadow is adequately confronted, and confronting means more than merely knowing about it, 
It is not until we have truly been shocked into seeing ourselves as we really are, instead of us as we wish or hopefully we assume we are, that we can take the first step toward individual reality.